Isaiah 9, 6. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. And he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. What do snowmen eat? Frosted flakes. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. Beautiful sight, we're happy tonight Walking in a winter wonderland Gone away is a bluebird Here to stay is a new bird He sings a love song as we go along Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we Build a snowman, then pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, Are you merry? We'll say, No man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we've made. Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we can build a snowman And pretend that he is a circus clown We'll have lots of fun with Mr. Snowman Until the other kids knock him down When it snows, ain't it thrilling? Though your nose gets a chillin' We'll frolic and play The Eskimo way Walking in a winter wonderland Walking in a winter wonderland Walking in a winter guys, and here's a fun Christmas game that you can play at home. It's called an ornament race. For this, you need a spoon and an ornament. So you would place the spoon in your mouth like this, and your ornament on the spoon. And then you would have to walk a distance. Whoever gets to the end first wins. However, if you drop the ornament, you would have to go back to the start and start again. Let's see this game in action. In your marks, get set, go. That was a close race, but looks like Jazzy took first place. Now it's time for the lesson. Okay, so once the lights are up, the next step is to add the ornaments. Lights bring color to a tree. Ornaments add a personality. Every tree is different because every family is different. Some families have big, fancy, elegant ornaments, while others have themes such as Disney characters or superheroes. Some have homemade ornaments, while most have a mix. There's a beautiful lesson that can be learned from a mismatched tree. The birth of Jesus wasn't just for a few, but for the whole world. The people had been told to expect a king, a conqueror, someone that would come and save them. They had been told that he would come from the family tree of King David. And where are kings born? in palaces surrounded by rich, important people. However, Jesus wasn't born in a palace. He was born in a stable with just his earthly mother and father and some stinky animals. Just because it was a humble beginning didn't mean that there shouldn't be a big show to, to announce his, um, his arrival. 
a choir of angels appear to a group of shepherds to let them know that baby Jesus had been born. Now, shepherds were also not big, important people. They were poor, kind of smelly, and most people didn't really want to hang around with them. You see, Jesus made a huge statement when he was born. He let people know that he wasn't here just for a few, but he was here for everyone. And even as he grew older, he showed us that with the people that he hung around. He hung around fishermen. He hung around a tax, tax collectors, uh, a radical, sinful people, people who were sick, such as lepers. He wanted everyone to know that he loved them and he was there, for, he was there to save them. The ornaments on the tree can remind us of who Jesus came to save. The fancy and those not so fancy, big and small, rich or poor, shiny, and also those that hung high and low on a tree. All are welcome on a tree. All ornaments are welcomed on a tree. Just like the shepherds were welcomed, the wise men, you and me, were all welcomed at the manger. John 3, 16 tells us, for God so loved the world. So it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus came for you. Did you hear about the race between Rudolph and all the other reindeer? No. He won by a nose. <laughs> hey, divine kids, Merry Christmas.